everyone, this is Mary Jane Dodge. She is the executive producer of uh, Dream Big. And um, she was very involved uh, in the project and worked on every uh, piece of the project of the documentary. So Mary Jane, if you could tell us, um, how do you come across Greg's idea for shooting this documentary? Well, hello everyone. I'm so happy you'll be seeing our film Dream Big. Um, the Dream Big really came about because of the engineers. The American Society of Civil Engineers contacted us and they wanted to do a film that really started to change the whole perception of engineering. Now, people don't understand how engineers are really changing the world, how they're solving some of the biggest issues of our time. And <clears throat> they also had, um, they wanted to inspire kids to go into the career of being an engineer because there are so many jobs in engineering that aren't being filled. So that was really our goal to nothing, nothing big or anything, just change the whole perception of what engineering is all about and it's hopefully inspire kids to become engineers. So um, we started off on that path and it was very interesting. It was quite a journey when we really dove into uh, what engineers are doing. I mean, one of my favorite stories and the first character that we met when we were uh, researching was um, Avery Bang, who was with a group called Bridges to Prosperity. And they build bridges so kids can get to school and parents can have access to healthcare. And that little scene, I really, I think got us all started into the heart of the whole film. And that is, you can change the world by becoming an engineer. Yes, um, Avery's story is um, especially like one of my favorite ones from the film because uh, I mean, the work that they do in these rural communities and just to see how like a structure a changes and impacts your life in in such a way like to be able to like cross the bridge so you can go to schools like especially for these kids and I don't think we often think about like the structure and the impact like structures have on our life and I know that the documentary it was made in partnership with the American Society of Civil Engineers how was it working uh with them especially on a creative project yeah, um, it was fantastic. They're such a great group. Um, they have, they're very creative and they have all these chapters all over the country. So the, um, the, the, the film was meant to play mostly in museums and science centers. So the partnership that formed with all the local members of the civil engineers was there in every city. There's 150,000 members actually worldwide. So we put the members together with the museums and science centers and the engineers who always work with schools anyway, all of a sudden they're planning red carpet events. And you know, how often does an engineer get to plan a red carpet event? They just loved it. They, they worked with museums and they had red carpets and VIP events and brought schools in. They did lectures. Uh, kids would see the film and then afterwards the engineers would set up a hands-on activity. So kids, you know, the scene in the movie where um, Menzer, who is also another really good character in the film, uh, a Turkish woman who is studying about earthquakes, and she's doing that earthquake activity with the marshmallows, the marshmallows and the, and the things, the building the structure and what happens if you tilt it. Well, kids could leave the film and then go do that activity. So it was really a great combination of really an educational impact. See the film, become motivated and inspired and then go do it. And we did find out through some surveys that it really did make a difference. 72% um, of kids are, are really considering and um, going into the career of being an engineer now. So that, that was a, for us at McGill Reefing Films, I don't know, it doesn't get any better than that, better than that when you get impact kids and their futures. Um, how did you choose uh, the stories to feature these uh, different engineers? How did you meet them? How is that process of finding out who these people were going to be and like working with them? That, that's a good question. Um, a lot of research. <laughs> we, um, 
you know, ASCE, the civil engineering group, had a lot of contacts for us. And then there were a lot of other engineering groups like the Society of Women Engineers and the Society of Lat Latino Engineers and African American Engineers. We contacted them all and started talking about um, some of their members and the engineers because we, we had something really specific we wanted to find and a young and we wanted women. We wanted to feature women in the film. So we wanted a woman engineer, young, who was getting into it, who had an interesting story. And um, people would give us ideas. They would send in bios and we must have interviewed, I don't know how many, 50 or 60 different people. Um, and with Avery Bang, we actually brought her into the office and we had a video test. We, we, we created a video to see how, how she would do with video because that's also important. You have to be a good communicator. So it was their background, their story, how it fit into the overall story for the film. And it all kind of had to, to fit in place. So um, um, when we found Menzer, who um, her story was incredible. As a, as a child, she was in a major earthquake in Turkey and she saw all the buildings crumble. And that, made, that was her inspiration to becoming an engineer. So we recreated that scene in the movie. So um, that was fascinating. And of course we wanted to show diversity and women. So um, it all kind of had to fit together. Yeah, it's um, interesting how I remember Menser saying in the documentary that when she was growing up, she always felt that she wanted to be uh, like an actress and like, you know, something like completely different from the engineer world and then how that, you know, that event changed her life forever and the way that she thinks about the world and it, it made her want to be an engineer. And I think for women uh, to know that we can be really anything, like, yeah, yeah you know? exactly. We love that too. When we heard that, we went, oh boy, she's perfect. And, you know, she would wear high heels to the uh, speeches. She, she gave a lot of appearances at museums across the country she'd wear high heels and have her best dress on. And just that image meant so much to the women in the audience. You can wear high heels and be an engineer. <laughs> so um, she was just such a great role model for us. And that's also important with the film is you have to have good spokespeople because to promote the film and to get people excited about it, you need someone from the film to talk about it. And people love to meet the person that's in the film. And boy, Menzer would be, would be swarmed by little girls after the premieres and after the screenings. They all wanted their picture taken with, with her. So um, that was really fun too. What has been um, the impact that Dream Big has had as an educational material? Because this is what's so wonderful about the film that it doesn't just end with watching the documentary, but you have all these resources that you can use in classrooms. That, that's exactly right. The film was the centerpiece of a whole educational outreach campaign. So the film was meant to inspire you and get you motivated. And then the activities really, really took place. Um, the schools, we, we, we created 12 lesson plans that were all tied to curriculum and they were all based on different things in the film. So you could explore some of the topics in more detail. And the film came out more than four years ago, about four and a half years ago. And those activities are still being used today. You can, all, everything is on um, our website. It's a, it's a hub, really. There are 50 hands-on activities, all about engineering. 12 of them we made specifically for the film. Then we have these 12 lesson plans and you can download them uh, free. Everything is free. So we have teachers all over the world that are using this information. And now Dream Big is available for streaming. So we can reach out into all the countries that if there's no IMAX theater in your area, you can still run the film. So we have a group in Ireland. It's called, there was a group called Engineers Ireland. And for their Engineers Week, they hold every year, they use the film and, sh and show the film in every school in Ireland. It, it just blows my mind every time I think about that. 
in Australia, we have another group, Engineers Australia. They're doing a similar thing. They're using the film to show school kids. And it's, it's a great because you get to invite school kids to come for an event. They get to see a film, which is always fun. Then they do the hands-on activities. Well, we have had over 5,000 um, private screenings with over 400,000 people that have seen the film with these events with engineers. So, you know, altogether, it's probably between three and three and a half million people that have seen the film. So, um, well, actually, there's actually quite a bit more than that. There's probably more like 10 million because we, we wow. also sent a DVD of the film to every school in America. And that's 100,000 schools in America. And uh, we don't even know how to estimate how many people, how many kids have seen the film, but uh, it's probably going to be in another couple of years, the whole life of the film will probably be 20 million people that will see the film. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, we're really excited. We always make our films um, not, not linked with time, so they can be really topical forever. It's called evergreen. Maybe you've, you've heard of that phrase before, films that are evergreen. It means they last forever. Our films last forever. <laughs> Dream Big is certainly one of them. Yeah, it's just an amazing film about engineers and, and what they do and how they change the world. I think we never um, think about the people that are behind uh, our cities because these people build our cities, where we live, where we walk, where everything. And I know. that's so beautiful about the film. We, we got letters from, uh, we got a letter from a little girl and it was, you know, some of these letters make you cry because she said, I never, I've probably crossed three bridges to go to school. I never thought of it as any, you know, a big deal. And then when she saw that scene in Haiti, when the kids had to wade across the river because there was no bridge, it gave her a total appreciation for a bridge and sympathy and empathy for, for other kids across the world. And so that was, we get letters like that all the time. We get letters that say, I want to be like Avery Bang. <laughs> We had one little girl that um, is raising money for Bridges to Prosperity because she said she was like 12 or 13 and she can't wait another 10 years before she becomes an engineer. So she takes her birthday money and, you know, she raises money to give money to Bridges to Prosperity so they can build more bridges. So the letters we get are just <laughs> really, really fantastic. You know, one of my favorite scenes in the movie, too, is the kids that are building the underwater robot. And that story was an, an older story, um, but we hadn't heard of it before. And it's that underdog story of, you know, here's these kids in Phoenix, Arizona that are going up against MIT and Harvard kids and they win. And, you know, that story um, has really motivated high school kids, which is hard to do. When you can reach high school kids, you know you're doing pretty well, but they could relate to it. And I, I saw the film, we brought the film one time to a, a high school, um, not too far from here, actually in California. And I was, I was never so afraid to show the film in my life. I, it was scarier than the film critics. And it was scarier than the professional engineers, a room full of high school kids. <laughs> and I was scared because like, oh, what are they gonna think? oh my God, they're cheering during the movie and they're yelling and, and laughing during the movie. And um, they were cheering those kids on that won against MIT. So, oh boy, that was, that was fun. That was, uh, you know, when, when we make the movie, you don't even know, always know what the impact is going to be. But our director, Greg McGillivray, boy, he knew the audience, he knew the message and he really knew how to do it. Uh, one critic said, you know, you can see a lot of movies that are made for kids and it kind of talks over them. And he said, this film doesn't do it. It, it, it goes, it meets the kids on their level. What a compliment that, that made us feel really good. Yes. And, and that story, the Carl Hayden students building this robot, yes. it's just like you were saying, like to beat MIT, uh, where some of the brightest minds 
go oh. to study and and these are just like high school kids you know doing know. the best they can like with simple solutions and and there's a line from a film that I love that says that sometimes the best solution is the simple one yeah and and it's just what they did those kids like they built a Rava uh, with the tools that were available with you know with the knowledge that they had and they did the best they could and and they won yeah and I love that story too people would cry the first time we showed the previews we'd have people crying in the theater I mean in our little preview room we're like I can't believe I'm crying at an engineering film <laughs> but that that thing about being having a simple solution that is so much what engineering is too is the creativity It's sometimes a solution can be simple so that was another great message to get across. And that's why those kids won. They just thought, thought about it, came up. And they had the right questions, as the teacher said, too. It's part of asking the right questions. And then just finding that simple solution. Uh, you know, my favorite is when they had to measure the, the distance from the robot to a, um, a stationary pole. And the MIT people got a laser and the laser measured the distance. Well, the Carl Hagen kids got a tape measure. You know, they, they couldn't afford a laser, so they got the tape measure. Yeah. So that was just, oh, you know, beautiful. <laughs> and um, last question, Mary Jane. As an executive producer of a film, what would you say is the hardest thing to do for a producer? Oh, boy. Um, well, it's... It's all the research that you have to do to, you know, it's finding the right components to put together. I mean, there's always a budget concern. Um, you have to, to weigh whether, do we have the budget to film that beautiful bridge in France? And we had so many things we wanted to do and something had to be cut. And the things we left on the cutting room floor, that hurts, that, that hurts. <laughs> I really wanted to do a sequence on this incredible bridge in France but you know you you something has to go you can't film everything and and the thing that i learned was that when you're producing a film the overall story really becomes key you have to see which pieces fit together um to make that story work so sometimes something that's a great visual might not fit into the story so um it's it's making those tough decisions of what stays in and what gets cut and it's, it's all about making, having our, our director had a vision and then sticking with that vision and sticking with that message. So that was very, uh, something I learned that was really important. Thank you so much, Mary yeah. Jane, for doing this Q&A with us for being here today. Thank you, Mary Jane. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Mm -hmm.